Hello and welcome to our special series on amplifying growth, achieving impact. I'm Pallavi from People Matters. Through our exclusive dialogues with industry leaders in partnership with Upgrad for Business, we unlock critical insights on driving impactful L&D interventions to empower a future-ready workforce. The three themes that will steer our conversation in this series are role transformation, reducing skill obsolescence, and driving employee engagement. These three are the bedrock of talent transformation and organizational growth in a dynamic business landscape. All of these exciting conversations will be then captured into an ebook, which will be titled How Do We Empower Organizations to Thrive in the New Age Economy? This will help and empower businesses to lead in the future of work. In today's conversation, we'll talk about reducing skills obsolescence and how it's not just about ensuring that your workforce is future ready, but also feeds into various business growth plans. It's also linked to ensuring that you offer your talent a plethora of opportunities to grow and stay in the company, supporting its endeavor to reach new heights. To discuss more on this, I'm excited to have with us Saket Swadesh, Tower Head for Training and Capability, Quality and Business Analytics at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. With over 22 years of experience, he is a business leader who has donned multiple hats throughout his career and comes with incredible expertise and insights in data analytics, reporting, capability, business process automation, and more. We also have with us Minakshi Indra, President of Grad for Business. Minakshi has two decades of business growth experience across companies like IBM, Cisco, SAP, LinkedIn, Uber, and now Upgrad. She's a purpose-driven leader, passionate about people's transformation. She leads the Upgrad for Business and Upgrad Work Better teams, focusing on bringing outcomes-driven learning programs for her customers. Welcome both of you on this panel. Thank you, Pallavi. Pleasure to be here. So as we cover different facets of reducing skills obsolescence in this interview series, uh, I would first ask a quick question to Minakshi, or in fact, both of you. Uh, how can organizations today accelerate talent retention through upskilling? How do you see them interlinked? Uh, Saket, if you want to comment first. Yep, yep, I'll go first. Thank you so much. So uh, talent retention is, as you know, you know it, it's uh, one of uh, the critical uh, challenges which every organization uh, is going through, right? And uh, one of uh, the key elements uh, around talent retention is uh, you know, how do we uh, keep the employees engaged and motivated uh, through a continual uh, career progression, right? So what uh, the new age workforce, the Gen X and Gen Z workforce is looking forward is uh, around uh, a very agile and accelerated career path and uh, how uh, the how much an organization is focused towards uh, the upskilling and make them uh, very relevant to what's going on uh, around, right? If you see today, uh, unlike the past decade, uh, talent uh, obsolescence is a critical element. Uh, the average uh, tenure of any skill today has come down from uh, maybe 10 to 15 years down to three to four years. So no matter what skill you have today, it is almost uh, given that your skills will become obsolete in three to four years. And what employees are looking forward to from an organization is, is a support system, which keeps them relevant for a long career ahead. So organizations today have to not only think about how do we utilize current skills, but also how are we developing potential for future skills, right? Most organizations today may not be doing the same uh, line of work as they are doing today. So everybody is innovating at an accelerated way and employees are key in that innovation journey for organizations. And what employees are looking forward to is, uh, is the is a continual process of uh, upskilling uh, followed by a continual process of uh, career development right and if there is uh, if there is a uh, if that is not taken care i think employees are looking forward uh, to move ahead uh, with an organization which is able to support them in their endeavor right so in a way uh, as far as uh, the skill development is concerned it has uh, now become one of the key elements uh, as far as the employee engagement is concerned and also key element from uh, the retention standpoint. Any remarks, Manakshi, as we begin the conversation? Oh, sure, Apalavi. I was just kind of reflecting on uh, what Saket said and uh, he's covered all, all the pointers uh, and especially from a organization perspective. Um, as I was hearing Saket, I was actually reminded of a study that I read from World Economic Forum, and they had data collected from about a million odd employees, if, uh, if memory serves me right. 
it mentioned that companies that focused on development of their employees grew their headcount by about 24% more than employees that did not. That is such a strong message in the day and the time that we live in. On the other end, the employees of these companies um, who felt that they didn't have access to learning and development were twice as likely to leave and that too within the first 12 months. For all of us who are in business roles, HR roles, talent roles, we know the cost of making a new hire, whether it is in terms of bandwidth, whether it is in terms of timelines, whether it is in terms of the number of people that we interview into a cycle. And in my mind, this is a very, very startling data point. The high rates of attrition that we currently see in the market uh, could partially be attributed to the skills gap in the market for certain roles and a new employer may be willing to hire at a higher compensation than the current one. But more significantly, in my opinion, it is due to the lack of definition of success in the current role for these employees and a clear articulation of what career laddering looks like. Uh, Pallavi, the reason I say that is over the past decade, and this is even pre-pandemic, uh, I have been speaking with business and HR heads and across the employee life cycle, more often than not, we see companies running point in time interventions for a specific set of employees. This in my mind uh, is not the best option. Um, it creates more problems than it solves because you're creating problem of some employees feeling not getting the attention, the company not investing, so on, so on and so forth. So I would want to talk about three things. First, for the new age workforce, which is usually zero to three years of experience, my sincere recommendation is to have stronger onboarding programs that are aligned with the overall success of the team that the employees belong to. Uh, in fact, one of our customers shared that they saved $300,000 by implementing impactful onboarding programs. And with such a start, you know that you're going to be able to build programs for employees where they feel engaged and they have a longer tenure within uh, organization. The second part I would cover is for uh, our high performers and first-time managers. They are likely to be talent scouted by our peers and competitors. Ensuring that we formally bring either a high performer program or a future leaders program as part of an organizational priority will lead to employees not just hearing, but seeing the action taken by the employers in terms of their career growth and which will eventually mitigate the risk of attrition. This segment of the workforce Pallavi, in my estimate usually carries anywhere between 30 to 50% of an organization's business priorities which means these could be tasks across revenue and non-revenue roles. And movement of this segment of folks will have a very strong detrimental impact to a business performance as well. Last but not the least, I would talk about our leaders. Uh, any leader in an organization is both our strategic thinker and the executor of that plan. Global programs and industry coaching are the best way, in my opinion, to ensure their skill acceleration and also ensure continued loyalty. I'd like to point out especially that running coaching mentoring sessions from an in-house leadership team itself is not as impactful as it brings issues of confidentiality, power distance, coming in the way of effective skills acceleration. This may be an unpopular opinion, by the way, but one that I would strongly back. And in fact, I'm glad that I have Saket on the panel with us today. He has been tremendously innovative and is bucking the trend by visualizing a dedicated leadership journey for his workforce. And I'm very pleased to be on the panel with you, Sake. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manakshi. And a uh, lot of insights from uh, from your uh, statements. Yeah. Well, well, a great way to kick off the, the conversation, but coming back to you, Saket, uh, you know, on, on talent retention, to L&D, an interesting initiative that uh, which is led by HP in partnership with our Brad for Business was the Early Career High Potential Program. So uh, if you could tell us what pushed your organization to launch this program, a little, you know, a driving factor, driving force behind it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, just a little bit background around uh... You know, the early career in HP, uh, we are an enterprise company uh, with enterprise class products, right? So uh, about four to five years back uh, is when we decided that uh, we will uh, invest in early careers. And uh, let's see if we can scale them up uh, to deliver at enterprise level. We were very successful in, uh, in that entire initiative and quite surprised also that, uh, you know, if you hire right, 
talent from campus or early career, uh, less than two years experience and invest on them. Then they are really uh, ready up for it. And they really surprised us with our performance. But uh, see, one of the challenges we were facing in that area is now how do we retain those talent? Uh, because one, you are, you are uh, positioning them at a very early stage of their career and they become quite uh, uh, quite marketable outside. So everybody wants to hire them. And second is uh, they still have a lot of aspirations in them uh, to specialize in certain areas. And for that, they seek uh, higher education as one of the routes, right? So to go for masters and things like that. So uh, when we did uh, the entire analysis, of course, our uh, attrition rates in the early career stages were high. And one of the reasons was, uh, you know, uh, is that uh, they really want to specialize and higher education seems to be an option. They still have uh, some years live, left in them uh, in the, what they want to invest in their academics, right? And second is how then we quickly, uh, we can quickly accelerate their careers by how they can add credentials uh, into their profile, which gives them proper positioning in the organization, right? So now we, to address this, uh, we thought, you know, let's, let's uh, invest uh, uh, in these uh, early career employees uh, while uh, and create a win-win situation. So while uh, they can uh, they can pursue their aspirations uh, at the same time, uh, we are able to capitalize on the skills and uh, which they have, right? And there is a continuity in in their employment with us, right? So uh, now, and the good way to do is to uh, uh, you know uh, get this higher education piece in-house. It brings in uh, that promise uh, to the employees. Uh, when we brought higher education, we brought in uh, uh, different uh, different uh, programs around it, right? Uh, in wide area of technologies, which they can choose from. And at the same time, uh, we created enough bandwidth for them to be successful uh, in their education as well as in their jobs, right? And that kind of worked very well for us. So to, uh, in terms of, we managed to create a long-term uh, pipeline in the areas we wanted to. Uh, we were able to provide them a long-term uh, vision into their career paths and career journey, right? And at the same time, uh, able to retain them, right? Without them having to pursue their aspirations, uh, uh, without them having to leave the, uh, leave the company. Right. Well, this was about the program, but if you could also tell us uh, how was your experience uh, with Upgrad and uh, what was the reason for choosing, you know, Upgrad as the partner for choice uh, for this program? Yes. So, uh, as I said, you know, we were trying to look at uh, how we can meet the aspirations of our early career. Now, it is very important that, uh, you know, the choice points we make actually uh, aligns with what the uh, the individuals aspire for, right? So we looked at what is uh, what is the brand we are bringing into our, uh, bringing in and offering them. It is not uh, it was not just about you know getting something as a checkbox activity. Uh, looking at uh, you know how, looking at just uh, you know dollars we have to spend. We were really wanting to uh, get a known uh, brand, the uh, known academic uh, universities, uh, which happen to have some brand value in the market, right? So uh, we looked at, and then we looked at uh, who are the partners who can help us uh, to bring those uh, uh, with us, right? Where we don't really have to really uh, look at uh, 10 different uh, providers for uh, different areas, right? For each of uh, the specializations we are looking at, if we can really identify one single partner who can bring in the best uh, platform, uh, can bring uh, the best uh, experience, as well as uh, the weight of uh, uh, these uh, top-notch uh, universities in India, right? So, uh, as you know, some of uh, the universities upgrades are ties up with IIIT uh, is uh, undoubtedly one of uh, the best, and uh, they are in working in close partnership with Upgrad. Upgrad also for our management programs uh, had tie-ups uh, with top universities uh, globally, right? So these were some of the factors uh, which uh, which made our decision easy uh, to partner with Upgrad. And of course, all of this comes with uh, the kind of experience they had to offer. Uh, education along with uh, a career or a job is not easy. 
So we really need that experience to come in, the kind of support and ecosystem uh, which Upgrad does. Uh, I mean, the team is fantastic in terms of how they supported uh, uh, our workforce and all our uh, top talent to be able to uh, make swift progress and, uh, you know, finally uh, get those degrees in hand uh, and have a continuity in the work as well, right? So uh, a lot of effort went uh, behind the scene uh, from Upgrad, right? Surely. Well, uh, I mean, actually, given that this unique program is focused on business leaders and upskilling high potential employees across, you know, different skill sets, it would be, you know, interesting if you could share your thoughts on the objectives and the outcomes which were expected. Uh, so, Pallavi, before I start, uh, Sake, thank you for being so candid about it. And, and a good partnership is always when both parties keep each other honest. And, and Sake has been um, very assertive in terms of the experience he wanted for his workforce. And, and he spoke about the early careers, which is a relatively younger workforce, uh, a workforce that is looking to invest. Um, it was almost um, uh, akin to ensuring that you bring multiple, multiple parts of an organization together. And the early careers program, the reason that it's been successful is because of the uh, buy-in that Saket has been able to build internally. Of course, our university partnerships, whether it is IIITB or our international partners, have been very supportive. So if you ask me, it's, it's the holy trinity. Saket's team, our university partners, and our grad team coming together. So, so appreciate you uh, calling that out, Saket. Uh, Pallavi, to your query, I actually want to touch upon another element of the, the work that we are doing, um, the innovative work that we're doing with HPE. And this is more uh, for their leadership team. So um, when we were talking to Saket, one of the things that we started developing and building together uh, was a few competencies for HPE's leaders on specific pillars, uh, which are very, very uh, relevant today, whether it is digital transformation, culture, edge to cloud SaaS transformations, and of course, people excellence. The outcome that we are working together is to amplify HPE's growth from core areas to their new core areas. And this is one of the most strategic work that we're doing because it also empowers us to really recommend partner and look at Saket and his team's direction for guidance and advice as we take this forward. Uh, so breaking this down, uh, we have four key elements for this one. One was skills elevation in emerging tech domains in alignment with HPE's career development plan that Saket spoke about. Second is that of um, accelerating the global business leadership team by incorporating skills, knowledge, and real experience. Third is developing a solid understanding of the challenges faced by businesses operating today across geographies and across domains. Last but not the least, really empowering our learners to self-discover and self-generate opportunities that create value, uh, value for the organization and also for the market. Keeping these four parameters in mind, we have crafted a 3,600 hours learner journey for the leaders spread across almost eight to 10 months. Um, there is a, a good um, segment of HP's business and domain leaders going through it. And Pallavi, I'm sure you can appreciate 3,600 hours for the leadership cadre is very, very impressive. As we took this forward, we have, we are further going to be breaking this up into certain areas of excellence that is a part of HPE's vision and their strategy across consulting excellence, customer success excellence, execution excellence, and sustaining excellence. In my a few year, last few years, um, I am yet to see this mindfulness from an organization in terms of the focus set of their leaders that they're trying to. Uh, work together, live together, and build together. At the end of this program, we are really looking to see the impact of digital technologies offerings within the industries of HPE's focus, positioning HPE's digital solutions towards excellence that they are looking to deliver in the market, and the leadership team becoming a stronger decision driver, taking calculated risk towards customer service innovation. We are thrilled that this program is closely aligned with HPE's goals, and we are very focused on accelerating this aspect of development. Well, thanks, Meenakshi, for that explicit uh, you know, uh, breakdown that you gave us. Uh, Sakit, anything that you want to add on before I move on to the next question? 
Yeah, so uh, about the program which uh, Menakshi highlighted, yeah, we, we are as a company undergoing a massive transformation. As you know, HP has been a product-based company for uh, the longest time, and now uh, we are transforming uh, as a service-based uh, company, right? And we 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 are the first ones in that direction. Uh, while uh, the transformation uh, happens overall in terms of our product and services. Uh, the workforce transformation is the key driver for that. And while uh, uh, we we undertook this massive uh, man, uh, MOC, uh, we realized that uh, you know for this uh, management of change to be successful uh, in terms of skill transformation and workforce transformation, the leadership transformation is uh, the most important uh, element, right? And so the change has to come from the top. Uh, while we have a huge... Uh, management experience, the depth in HP is uh, second to none in the industry. The leaders uh, uh, leaders have been into this business very successful for the longest time. However, uh, there was a need uh, to look at uh, the transformation needs at leadership level as well, and we wanted to bring that. And uh, with a lot of uh, research and study and with partnerships with uh, the consulting organizations, also with Upgrad, we kind of uh, arrived to a very unique uh, framework, uh, which I, I believe uh, is, is going to be the key differentiator uh, in this entire management of change, right? So we brought in elements from uh, practices from everywhere to stitch our own uh, leadership uh, practice and leadership competency metrics. And now uh, partnering with Upgrad to really see how we can then uh, execute uh, uh, the upskilling activities amongst our leaders. So uh, and, uh, till now, uh, uh, we are almost uh, on that journey now. Uh, so that initiative is in progress. As she mentioned, it's a, it's a long-term effort. We are not looking at, uh, a, not just looking at uh, from uh, an intervention point of view, but it's really a journey. So we are in that journey. And uh, I can say that uh, the reflections of uh, has already started coming in. So we have started making some progress in the way we uh, way we uh, drive our goals and uh, programs. So and and that that's how we are looking at, at the end of the program that uh, the impact which we are trying trying to bring in uh, with our leadership uh, capabilities uh, should really uh, be influenced by the work which we are doing. Sure. In fact, talking about impact, Sakit, if I could segregate the impact into two, and if you could, uh, you know, answer that one, uh, a the change that you saw in the learners from an organizational impact, and also the change that you saw in talent retention rates. If you have like any numbers to share, anything that you would like to highlight. Yeah. So, uh, as an organization, you look back at enterprise. Uh, we we always do better when it comes to. Uh, overall employee engagement, our, uh, while the whole world was struggling with the massive uh, talent drain within the organization, uh, our uh, our iteration and everything did go high, but compared to industry, we still managed to do far, far better, right? And this is uh, one of uh, the the aspect of Hewlett Packard Enterprise, uh, you know, people tend to, uh, tend to not leave uh, HPE. Right. However, uh, in terms of all these uh, transformation and the work which we are doing for talent development, right, this has shown very positive results. Uh, iteration, I would say, uh, we do uh, almost at 50% of the industry. So while in the services uh, in IT, you will see typical iteration rates of above 20%, anywhere between 24 to 27% is, uh, is within the range. Uh, within HP, we do uh, operate at half of that, and uh, which is which is uh, which is very unique, and uh, it it shows that uh, whatever we do in terms of employee engagement and uh, skill and talent management is a part of it. It really works well here. In terms of our internal uh, successes, uh, I would say talent mobility is a key measure for me as a leader uh, driving uh, talent transformation. You know, how are we able to meet the career aspirations? What is the internal talent mobility within the organization, right? And I believe any uh, any talent mobility rates between 30 to 40% within an organization is, uh, is a very good number. And we year on year are very consistent on that. 
So we almost have a talent mobility of about 40% year on year internally, where 40% people are able to uh, progress their career internally. Uh, uh, and that means that our overall turnaround tenor, will be anywhere uh, about uh, two and a half to three years, which means every three years you get an opportunity to again progress your career, right? And in services, that's that's, I mean, that is a very good uh, talent mobility uh, metric to track. Uh, so these are very uh, few results, uh, which uh, shows and reflects on uh, the work which we are uh, uh, putting in in terms of talent management. It's a very strong benchmark, Saket. Forty percent plus consistently on year on year. Uh, is really emulation worthy. I'm sure a lot of our audience members might uh, bombard you on LinkedIn just to know how and uh, what are steps you've taken to ensure this. This is terrific. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so I mean, the whole organization also, uh, which state uh, you are in in your business also matters. There has to be opportunities first. I like the point which you highlighted in the beginning, uh, Manakshi, very much. Maybe that is the reason that companies who which invest on uh, talent development, uh, manage to grow uh, at a faster rate. Right? Today, uh, I think the way market operates is that there is enough opportunity available. Whether you have uh, skills to deliver on that uh, is the question, right? So if, if, if you are a little bit uh, uh, prepared for the opportunities coming your way, I think uh, the talent mobility will definitely follow. But so you have to challenge the status quo at all times. And uh, I think uh, opportunities come in. Very true. Very true. Well, Minakshi, as we are moving towards the close, I uh, want to know your views on how critical it is for businesses to talk and act on the lines of talent engagement, talent mobility, and talent retention. Well, I think Saket has covered most of it. Um, I'll try to demarcate between these three concepts that you've spoken about talent engagement, talent mobility, and talent retention. Um, talent mobility really is the ability of an organization to repurpose its employees across roles, across countries, across divisions. It could be in adjacent skills or seemingly non-related skills too. Talent engagement is the continuous connect and impactful conversations that employers have with employees such that there is a sense of belonging and inclusion that's created in an organization. Last but not the least, talent retention is the most obvious one. Having tenured employees that are productive and contribute to organization success. Um, according to a recent Gartner report, there are 47% of employers who reported that they do not know what skill gaps their current employees have. And that's significant. If you look at almost 50% of the employers saying, hey, we don't even know what skill gaps do we have to mitigate for us to have uh, an employee base that is engaged and we can work on talent retention. At the same time, we have also almost 40% of employers saying that they can't develop skill solutions fast enough to meet the evolving needs coming from their own employees, which means employees are also taking charge and talking to companies about the skill needs that they have, the development that they are looking at so that they can grow in their own careers and help the organizations always be more successful. So if you bring this board together without knowing what the skill gaps are, it's really not possible to induce fluidity into the way employees can function or move within roles. A continuous assessment of current and future talent needs, skill needs is critical for all of us as organizations to focus on. Once we identify this, then talent can be engaged better. And it is not just for the sake of talent mobility, but more importantly for employees to feel that the company is invested, for them to perform better in their current roles and to stay up to date with what's happening in the market. This topic is really about skills obsolescence and it is a challenge in any industry domain barring very few ones. In fact, I wanna share an interesting example that I came across and for those of us who's, who are interested in science and space, we'll find it as um, especially enticing. So during a recent pathology data analysis challenge, an astrophysicist who was employing the black hole theory uncovered a promising insight on cancer detection. Imagine the possibilities. From black hole exploration in space 
to insights on cancer detection. And that's what I mean by focusing on adjacent skills earlier. We sometimes as organizations don't realize how certain skills could be repurposed into seemingly disparate functions and ensuring that there's a fresh perspective, a heightened sense of achievement and a very different way of thinking that can come into our teams and our businesses. Closer home, it applies as well to a data analyst getting opportunities in an organization to upskill and become a data scientist. A university credential program that Sake spoke about in the beginning can really help convert a data analyst into a data scientist because they already possess the foundational skills for this. This is cost effective, helps in employee engagement, and is a massive time saver for an organization as well. We have enough and more studies that speak about the business and productivity loss when there is frequent people movement. Companies with stable tenure teams are 2x more likely to meet their business projections and likely to add 20% to their profits. These data points drive home the point of continuous attention towards talent engagement, talent mobility, and talent retention. Well, on that note, uh, before we let you go, Sake, just one last question. What is that one key takeaway from this partnership that you would like to leave us with? Any message for the community that you would like to give on this platform? Yeah, so I, I think we, 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 have, uh, we are working very closely uh, on our endeavor uh, to be successful uh, uh, with skills being the differentiator for our organization. I think uh, with that, uh, working with Upgrad, uh, we believe that in while we transform, Upgrad will also uh, be able to partner and uh, with us in that journey. Uh, the key thing is uh, we continuously want to uh, uh, outsmart and uh, grow uh, ourselves, and also we want solutions which uh, which are not only addressing current needs but also addressing needs for future. So. Uh, really looking forward uh, to stay ahead in the game and uh, the partnership which we have chosen. I think uh, their upgrade also aspires to be the same. So I think uh, coming together is uh, working very well mutually for us and we continue to uh, continue to grow and build on that. Well, thank you so much, Sake and Minakshi, for sharing all your insights and your learnings with us. It was incredible to learn about your partnership and the impact that it had on the business at large in talent retention. Uh, that's all we have for today. We'll bring in more exciting, impactful takeaways on empowering your organizational growth strategies to thrive the new age economy. Uh, thank you so much once again, panelists, and thank you all the viewers who are attending the session. Thanks for watching. We'll come up with some more interesting sessions for you. Thanks, Bali. Thank you. Thank you.